Hey guys, Dave from Nardarchy, Four Nards, by Nards, hanging out with Nardarchy's Ted. And today we delve back into our series on recovery die and new ways to use them in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. And this time we're going to be talking about the fighter. Jump down the description below where you can sign up for Nardarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nardarchy. So we're on to fighter now for recovery dice and what we could possibly do with them. Well, I guess, you know, first we should really look at, because this is the first time in this series of videos that we've gotten to a class that actually has three archetypes. So we've been pretty much trying to stick to three. Right. But we've always wanted to, like, lean things towards the specific archetypes. Yeah, pr previously, like, if there's two, we were like, okay, we could do a specific archetype, for each and then maybe something generic right and then we were like cleric there's way too many of them so we're just going to go with three generics right but with bard barbarian and druid they each only had two archetypes to choose from right well we so. did go on a little bit of different route with druid for different reasons you can check out that video for those reasons right but fighter we have three archetypes uh and also the fighter archetypes each of them is very distinct and very very flavorful. They, it has its own feel to it. So why don't we break down each of the archetypes and see like what's special about them and maybe we'll finagle something to work for them. Okay. So which one do you want to start off with? Uh, let's start off with the champion. All right. The, the champion is about honing the, the physical superiority of your body. And your your fighting ability? Yeah, the fighter like the, to me the champion fighter archetype is like the fighter's fighter. You know, it, it is the it, in a sense in some senses it's kind of bland and generic, but at the same time, it really embodies what it is just to be you know an all around warrior and the physicality of it. And you know, the it, it reminds me of a lot of the tropes that you see in 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 books. Right. So, with that, let's move on to the next one. All right, so the next we would say would be your battle master. And this is the, the one who manipulates the battlefield through the, the actions and the superiority dice that they actually have. Yeah, where the champion is more like brute force, I feel like the, the battle master feels like more like finesse and skill. I would say so. Like, I see the battle master, while it doesn't have to be, to me, is is leans heavily towards the dexterous fighter. Yes, and and like you said, it doesn't have to be, but you know why? It's because of the skill, and you think dex equals skill, but it, not necessarily. <laughs> but and the battle master gives you a way to play it either way, right? right. So that's really cool. And the, the they have a keystone ability, and that is superiority dice. Exactly. So anything that we'd want to do here should probably be keyed toward that. That makes sense to me. So the last is the eldritch knight. The Eldritch Knight is your classic gish. This is the guy that goes, I'm going to cast spells and hit you with my sword. Maybe sometimes, at the, so maybe at the same time. So then with that one, you know, we should be, do something that is magic oriented. I believe so. And, and really, you know, key to their specific abilities, which are spell casting, as well as the bonded weapon. Right. All right. So do we want to start with that one and work our way, you know, back up the chain? Sure. So... All right, so one of the things about the Eldritch Knight that's kind of a little bit annoying is they get to bond with two weapons, right? Not the annoying part. That's actually the cool part, where as long as they're on the same plane, they can just summon them back to them as a bonus action. Right. But that being said, they're just whatever weapons they bond it to. Where the Warlock actually, Packway Warlock, actually makes theirs a magic weapon. In this case, you just have a regular weapon or something that you found is magical, so that that part I don't like that much. Now the the fighter, the Eldritch Knight, they can summon it from anywhere, whereas the Warlock can literally dismiss it, and it exists only in an extra dimensional plane. To me, leads to believe that the fighter is not as good as the Warlock. When we're talking about fightery type stuff, the fighter should really have the edge. Right. So so one of the things we came up with, well what if the, what if we gave them the ability to um enchant the blade, right? Or warhammer or axe, <laughs> whatever it happens to be. Enchant the weapon. Yes. So but enchant the blade is they can you know, they can just expend the recovery die and they make that weapon magic if it's not magic already and it gives them a plus 1 to hit and damage. Right. So if it's already a, a magic item you bump the plus one, and yay, great. 
Exactly. So it's useful. I would say probably lasts a minute. You know, they get to use it for a little while, then it goes away. And it's the idea of them, you know, infusing magical energy into their, it, it, you know, into their weapon. So I think it works. I think it's thematic. Definitely works for me. And it's going to give you bonuses to hit and damage. So what fighter isn't going to want that? That's true. All right. So next we would have the, uh, the Battle Master. So, as we talked about, this one should be keyed towards their superiority dice. Yeah, it is really the defining trait that they have for the most part. And, you know, basically as they gain levels, they gain more maneuvers. They get larger dice when they use those maneuvers. It just makes that one thing better. So they've already doubled down on it. Why not triple down on it? So instead of, you know, oh, can we give them more dice or can we... Uh, recover dice because they already get, get them back on a short rest. What if we just allow them to double whatever modifier they're doing for that particular round? Right. So if they're rolling a die, instead of rolling one, they roll two. Uh, you know, for the full round, it lasts. I think that's good enough. Can you know, considering the scope of their abilities and how fast they kind of get they kind of get their superior dice back anyway. It's a huge bonus, especially if they time it right and use it when, I don't know, maybe they get a crit or something. It's going to really it's going to re really pay off for them. I, I, I would agree. So, you know, like if you're doing precise attack where you get your die to hit, you're really doubling on that. You spend your, you spend your one superiority die, you spend your appropriate number of, of recovery dice, and voila, you now have two dice to your bonus to hit. You're, get, you're getting that shot. Hopefully. <laughs> but and, and in addition to that, too, like a lot of them do the dice as extra damage or extra armor class or something. But like on the ones with extra damage, you get a crit. You go, oh, well, now would be the perfect time to spend it. So, you know, instead of rolling one die or rolling two die, you're actually going to end up rolling four die. So yeah, it can be very timely. But that's part of the trick is knowing when to use it and when not to use it. All right. So then last we have the champion. Now, the champion, as we said, is a very physical, uh, they're one of the only, I believe they are the only one in the game that actually gets a bonus to crit range, and they get their uh, expertise in athletics. Yes. So they actually they actually get that, that bump to the crit range twice in the game, and in the player's handbook, this is the only place it happens. Now, there are some other places I've seen it on Arthur Canna, but as of right now, as raw official material, they're the only ones. Right. So since we did the, the double triple down with the uh, battle master, do we want to do the double triple down with the champion? Sure. Why not? So what if we say for a minute? You know, you probably want to do this. You know, at the start of a battle for a minute, you increase your crit range by one, and you have it written, worded that you hone the edge. And if your crit range is already like an 18 to 20 as the, you know, the high level champion gets, this will actually bump it to a 17. Right. So it's kind of a big deal, but it's also, you know, it's the luck of the dice. You may not, you still may not crit at all, even though you expend this resource. Right. Or you might roll a 20 and be like, oh, son of a. <laughs> so you'd have, you'd have to do it, you know, like at the start of an attack, would you say? Like before you roll the dice? Yeah, so I think with this one, because of its nature, and I think this one is supposed to be a little bit dicey as to whether it's going to work for you or not, uh, the player should have to declare this one at the beginning of their turn before they do anything. Right. You know, they, they can't do it after they've dropped the dice or what have you. Th that'd probably be the fairest way to use this one. Because, again, it's a really good thing. You know, the, it could it could essentially allow them to crit every time they attack, you know, if they're lucky. Right. So it should be a little risky. Now, with each of the ones that we've done, we've we've had a generic, but we've also only done three per class. Do we want to do a generic this way? Each archetype has four, has two options, or do we want to just say, "All right, you're a fighter. You choose your archetype. You get something sweet, regardless of which one you pick." Well, okay, so we we could definitely do that. What are you thinking? Well, I think if we went and give someone just a generic you know something for generic for the fighter um you know there, there's always things that can be done with your action and fighters actually get action surge so there's already a built-in mechanic for them to get extra so what if we did something where they got 
an extra bonus action. Right, so we've been doubling down a lot. Why not do it? So I guess it sounds like what you're thinking is whenever the fighter uses action surge, during the action surge, they can expend recovery die and they can then get a bonus bonus action. So they will get two bonus actions, which makes a lot of which I like because you constantly see this coming up in uh, Sage Advice and they're constantly, you know, uh, players are constantly asking the designers you know, about this, and they're like, no, you only get one bonus action. Well, if we do, we add this little addendum with, a, you know, with your recovery die, only when you're action surging, you can then take another bonus action in conjunction with it. Now, you're kind of limited because you only get one action surge per short rest, so it's not like you can spam this all <laughs> over the place. Eventually, you get two per short rest, but again, that's higher levels, and it's, it's not going to be a big deal. So the limiting factor then becomes, well, you only get so many action surges to do this with. And let's face it, what are they going to really do with that bonus action anyway? It might set some cool things up, like War Magic becomes a lot more fun at that point because you can use it more times in one round. Uh, you could also, you know, get more attacks with like an offhand weapon or the, if you have the feat like Great Weapon Master or something like that. Uh, if you crit or... Um, drop an opponent where you get to make an attack as a bonus action. Well, now you can make another attack again. So I think they're like, it's going to be very situational, but it gives some fun options. All right. So for, we've got for the battle master, well, we're going to call that one combat insight. Yes. You know, so that we've got, you know, the ways to, to double down on that for our champion. You know, we've got hone the edge. Nice, nice name. That's really looks like, you know, you're streaming that down to get that crit in there. For the Eldritch Knight, we've got Enchant Weapon. Uh, you know, what do we want to, to to call the generic fighter? Do we want to call it like Lightning Reflexes, Lightning Action? I I, I like Lightning Reflexes. It used to be a feat back in third edition. Uh, it does not live in fifth edition yet. Let's go with Lightning Reflexes. And I also like the way that sounds. All right. So, what do you, what do you guys think out there of our series of you know extra ways to use your healing hit die? Yeah, what what did uh what do you think of these p particular ones for fighter? Uh, do you have any suggestions for the the classes we haven't done yet? Any way you want to continue the conversation, you can do so down in the comments. While you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hey, you enjoy the content we put out? There's a way to you can support that through Patreon. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.